Hi, welcome to my video where we're going to be solving equations with variables on each side. Um, I'm going to guide you through about 10 problems or so. Feel free to write them down on a piece of paper, pause when you need to, press play, see if you can try some things on your own um, if you're feeling up to it, and follow right along. I have plenty of other videos on solving equations, so if this seems a little too tough, make sure to take a look at the other ones before you watch this video. All right, so here's the deal. I have this really important step that I put a little star next to. When you have variables and constants, remember constant is just a fancy word for a number. If you have variables and constants on both sides of the equation, you get to do whatever you want first. You do. If you have variables on both sides and constants on both sides, you can technically solve that equation in any way you want, and I promise you, you get the exact same result. And I'm gonna prove it to you in just a moment. So let's take a look. Here are my first two problems. A plus 5C equals 7C minus two. Um, okay, I would ask you, as I've asked you in my other videos, what do you have on both sides of the equation? Do you have constants on both sides? What would you say? Yes, you have an eight and a negative two. Those are numbers. You have constants on both sides of your equation. What about variables? Do you have variables on both sides? Yep, we've got a 5C and then a 7C. So when you have both on both sides of the equation, you can technically remove whatever you want first. You can get rid of one of the constants or you can get rid of one of the variables. It will not matter. Our result will be the same. We can technically do this problem four different ways. Let's say I decide to, for whatever reason, get rid of this positive eight. So the way I get rid of a positive eight is to subtract eight. And if I subtract eight on both sides, I'm now left with five C equals seven C, let's say negative two minus eight is negative 10. After that first step where you get to choose whatever you wanna do, you no longer get to choose. Now we have to make sure we're making smart decisions. So now what do I have on both sides of my equation now? Constants or variables? It's variables. I've got a 5C and a 7C. Which one should I start to remove so that I'm ending up with variables on one side and constants on the other? Because that's what I need. I want C equals some number. And I can't have that if I've got my C and my number on the same side of the equation. Now, when I look at this 5C and 7C, think about it for a moment. If you were to get rid of 5C, subtract 5C on both sides, would you have anything left over here on the, on the left-hand side of the equation? No. What about if I subtracted 7C on both sides? Minus 7C, minus 7C. I would be left with a negative 2C on the left and a negative 10 on the right, which is exactly what I want. So what I really want to do is I want to get rid of the variable that's on the same side as the number so that I can get my variables to one side and my numbers to the other. We know at this point, then we divide both sides by negative two and positive five is my result. Now I'm gonna show you how I would solve this same exact equation. I'm gonna make a brand new box here and I'm gonna solve it by doing a different step first. So let's say I did eight plus five C equals seven C minus two. And let's say I didn't wanna subtract eight. Let's say I decided to randomly get rid of the five C first. Let's subtract 5C on both sides. I would then have 8 equals 2C minus 2. Then what would I have on both sides? Constants, an 8 and a negative 2. Which one do I need to remove so I get the variable to be by itself? The negative 2. If I got rid of the 8, then I'd have nothing there. So now I'm left with 10 equals 2C, and you know where this is going. We're going to divide both sides by 2, and guess what my result is? C equals 5. Same thing I have here. So you can technically do anything you want in that order, but once you do that first step any way you want, you have to make sure you're super careful with the rest of the ways. All right, so there's numerous ways we could do these problems. I obviously can't do all the ways for every single one, but follow along. So here I have the next one. I've got constants on both sides, variables on both sides. I technically can pick whatever I want. 
I decided to get rid of a constant on both sides here first and problem number one, so let me get rid of one of my variables, this 4K. So I'm gonna subtract 4K on both sides. That's gonna leave me with negative nine plus 4K equals seven, that's gone. Now I have constants on both sides. Which one do I need to remove so I get 4K to be by itself? It would be the negative nine. If I add nine on both sides, I'm left with 4K equals 16 and then k is equal to four. And now of course, I always guys can go back mentally, plug in my k value, make sure I get a true statement on both sides. That's never a problem. Okay, next two problems have an additional step and it should be pretty obvious. At this point, we should be very comfortable with the distributive property and that's definitely my first step. So I need to go ahead and I need to distribute six times negative three x, six times one, five times negative two x, and five times negative two. And now if I distribute that, I should be getting negative 18x plus 6 equals negative 10x minus 10. I've got variables on both sides. I've got constants on both sides. You know the drill, guys. We can do whatever we want first. So let's say I decided to subtract 6. Again, this is just one of the ways. I'm left with negative 18x equals negative 10x minus 16. Now what do I have on both sides? Variables. Which one do I get rid of, the negative 18x or the ten, negative 10x? The negative 10x. If I got rid of this negative 18x, there'd be nothing on that side of the equation. And I want to get the variables on one side and my constant on the other side. So I'm going to add 10x. That will leave me with negative 8x equals negative 16. Divide both sides by negative 8 so I can get x by itself. And x is equal to 2. Next one. 2 times 3y and then 2 times 7, then negative 4 times 3, and negative 4 times negative 2. All right, so if I distribute this out, this becomes 6y plus 14. Fix that here. Negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Negative 4 times negative 2y is positive 8y. Again, I've got variables and constants on both sides. I can technically remove whatever I want to first. So let's say I decided to get rid of this negative 12 for whatever reason by adding 12. I now have 6y plus 26 equals 8y. Now what do I have on both sides? Variables. Which one do I get rid of, the 6y or the 8y? The 6y. Notice it's never been, oh, you get rid of the smaller one. That's never the answer. It's always just you get rid of the term that's on the same side as the other value. So if you have constants and a variable, you get rid of that one. If you just have a variable by itself here, you're not getting rid of that because then there'll be nothing there. So I'm gonna go ahead and subtract 6y. I'm left with 26 equals 2y, and therefore y is equal to 13. Pretty good. All right, next two. 2 thirds x minus six equals six minus 2 thirds x. Okay, so let's take a look and see what happens here. I've got constants on both sides and I've got variables on both sides. Fraction problems we can take care of in two different ways. The first way is just to go business as usual as we did with the other ones. So let's say I decided to get rid of this negative two thirds X. Let's say that was the first thing that I wanted to do. So I would add two thirds on both sides. Okay, plus two thirds plus two thirds. Two thirds X plus two thirds X is four thirds X, okay? So I've got 4 thirds x minus 6 equals 6. Now I've got constants on both sides. I need to get rid of my negative 6 by adding 6. And so then I have 4 thirds x equals 12. We then know from our one-step equations the way we undo a 4 thirds is to multiply both sides by 3 over 4. That way my 3s and my 4s simplify out. Then 12 times 3 is 36. 36 divided by 4 is 9. Um, one other way we could have done this problem is to clear fractions. And I have a video in my multi-step equation video about how to clear fractions. So if this is a brand new skill for you, you might want to watch that video as well. So 2 thirds x minus 6 equals 6 minus 2 thirds x. So you might say to yourself, you know what, this problem would just be maybe friendlier from the beginning. Actually, it wasn't too bad if I had no fractions at all. So what we can do is we can multiply both sides of the equation by the common denominator. Now, 
Here, the denominators are both 3. So I'm going to multiply both sides of my equation by 3. Look what's going to happen. 3 times 2 thirds x, those 3 simplify out. I'm left with just 2x. 3 times negative 6 is negative 18. Fractions are gone. Let's look over here. 3 times 6 is 18. 3 times negative 2 thirds x is negative 2x. So again, those threes would simplify out and you're just left with a negative two X. I've got variables and constants on both sides. Let's say I decided to add two X. So now I have four X minus 18 equals 18. I have constants on both sides. So I need to add this 18. I think you can see where I'm going with this. Ooh, bad line. Four X equals 36. Divide both sides by 4. And what's 34 divided by 6? I'm sorry, 36 divided by 4. Same thing here. You get the same result of 9. So that's clearing fractions. And you can do that anytime you have fractions. You simply look at the denominators. If they're the same, you multiply by that number on both sides. If they're different, you have to find the least common denominator. So you kind of have to go back to when you learned about adding and subtracting unlike fractions. Okay, that had unlike denominators. We're going to try one right now. So fraction problem. We can do business as usual. Let's say I decide to get rid of this negative 5 eighths x by adding 5 eighths x on both sides. So now I'm left with 1 half equals 12 eighths x plus 7 halves. I've got constants on both sides, so I need to get rid of that negative 7 halves. Oh, 7 halves by subtracting 7 halves. 1 half minus 7 halves is negative 6 halves. Now, I definitely can clean this up. What's negative 6 divided by 2? Negative 3. 12 eighths really can simplify to 3 halves. So this becomes negative 3 equals 3 over 2x. I need to get x by itself. So I multiply both sides by 2 over 3. That way my 3s and my 2s simplify out. And when I multiply this together, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Negative 6 divided by 3 is negative 2. Now if I wanted to do this problem, sorry it's so light, I'll write over that. If I wanted to do the process of clearing fractions, okay, I'll show you what this would look like. All right, so 1 half minus 5 eighths x equals 7 eighths x plus 7 over 2. Now, look at your denominators, 2 and 8. What's the least common multiple of 2 and 8? The smallest number that 2 and 8 both divide into, it's 8. If I multiply both sides by 8, my fractions are going to be gone. 8 times a half is 4. 8 times negative 5 eighths x is negative 5 x. 8 times 7 eighths x is 7 x. 8 times 7 over 2, so 8 times 7 is 56. 56 divided by 2 is 28. Okay, let's say I add 5x on both sides. I'm left with 4 equals 12x plus 28 minus my 28. And I'm left with negative 24 equals 12x. Almost done. Divide both sides by 12. And what's negative 24 divided by, whoops, 12? Negative 2. Same answer. Pretty good. All right. Last few problems for us. And these are really special problems, so hang with me here, and then we're almost done with this lesson. Okay. Negative 6y minus 3 equals 3 minus 6y. Okay, I've got constants and variables on both sides. It's just business as usual. So let's go for it. Let's add 3 on both sides. I add 3 on both sides. I now have negative 6y equals 6 minus 6y. I've got variables on both sides. Okay, so let's get rid of this one. I'm sorry, this one and add 6y. But what do you notice ends up happening here? The 6y's are all gone. And if I have nothing on the left-hand side of the equation, that really means it's just a zero. 
Look what I'm left with. Zero equals six. Does that even make sense? Does zero equal six? No. Can zero ever equal six? No. What is zero equal to? Zero. So that's not a true statement. Doesn't make any sense. When your variables are gone and you're left with a number equaling some other number, that's a false statement. When this happens, the result is actually no solution. There is no number in the world that you could substitute in for y here and it will give you a true statement. No number in the world. It just wouldn't work. Let's look at the next one. 8x plus 12 equals 4 times 2x plus 3. So the natural thing here is like, we're like, okay, there's distributive property. Let me distribute that out. And then notice what you have on both sides, the exact same thing. All right, so let's say I, then I subtract the 8x. The variables are gone. I'm left with 12 equals 12. What if I even went a step further, subtracted 12 on both sides? I'd be left with 0 equals 0. Is that a true statement? Does 0 equal 0? Yes, it does. Even back here, does 12 equal 12? Yeah. Does 8x plus 12 equal 8x plus 12? Yes. When that happens and your two sides are identical, that means there's an infinite amount of numbers and it's all real numbers. All real numbers could possibly be that solution. 8 times any number in the world plus 12 is going to be equal to 8 times that same number plus 12. It just makes sense. Okay, I've got two um, last problems here for us. Okay, I already have them. I'm going to cover that back up. I wish it was covered. My apologies. I'm going to give you a moment if you want to pause the screen and translate them if you didn't already see what the result would have been. Okay, so if you want to pause the screen and then try to translate them. Okay, here's what our equation should look like. And then based on what we know from our lesson, you should be able to solve these with no problem. So if you have your equations good and you want to pause right now and solve them, please do. And then take a look at the result. Okay. This one might have been a little tricky for us if we're uncomfortable with our fractions. So this is really a 1x. And if you subtract 1x, think about it, that's really negative 3 thirds. Think about you can only subtract fractions if they have the same denominator. So 2 thirds minus 3 thirds is negative 1 third. And then you'd have to multiply both sides by a negative 3. And then this one is very, very straightforward. Well, I hope this was an easy lesson for you. I hope you were able to follow along. Thank you so much for joining me.